Hey everyone. Uh, so today we're going to present on RAT as a ransomware, a hardware approach that we have seen used by some of the RAT families that we will be discussing. Uh, first, we would like to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Nirmal Singh, and uh, with me I have my colleague Avinash Kumar, and Neeraj uh, is sitting there. So we all are working uh, for security research team in Zscaler. So, uh, so the, here is the agenda. So first we will be uh, discussing about uh, the hybrid approach that uh, malwares are following up. And then along with that, we will also be discussing about some of the top rats that we have seen in, in the Zscaler, along with the, the different threat groups that we have seen using those uh, rats specifically. And then we will deep dive into a uh, few case studies of the rat families that we have seen uh, where they are using malware, uh, ransomware module specifically. And then we will conclude the session with that. So here we have uh, provided a small representation of the attack life cycle. So we know like uh, the attack starts with the initial infection vector, which could uh, include the spam email, malicious attachment, and that can result into dropping a malware downloader or dropper. And then uh, Final stage would be where uh, a ransomware or any other uh, threat category um, related to any other threat category, malware will be dropped. So over the past few years, I think we have, everyone has observed that uh, the malware, different malwares, they are combining the features from other categories. And that I think is driven by the profitability of uh, other malware families, for example, ransomware. So we saw that ransomware is now having the stealer capabilities as well. So they are sealing the data and then they are uh, finally you know, blackmailing the victim to earn more money. And we have seen that same trend in RAT as well. So now we have seen few uh, RAT families, those are combining ransomware features as well. And we will be discussing this. So here is a list of the top uh, 10 RATs that we have seen and uh, Ramcos rat is at the top. And, uh, we have seen that uh, the adaptability or popularity of any rat depends on the feature uh, that it provides, and that's true related to each uh, malware family. So we have listed few groups as well. So these threat groups we have seen they use uh, different kind of rats and they target different uh, industries as well, and that includes travel. Uh, industry and then hospitality, including, you know, targeting specific governments as well. So when we were doing research and we were following up these threat groups, we came to know about uh, this very small TA558 threat actor. This is a financially motivated threat actor, which is active since 2018. And uh, when we followed up the campaigns or the phishing emails that uh, they are using, so we uh, agreed, I mean, we come to know that they are mainly targeting travel and hospitality industries and based on the language that they use in the campaign. Uh, so they are mainly, you know, targeting users speaking Spanish and Portuguese languages. Um, so related to the specific campaign that I was mentioning regarding a specific rat, so we observed that this threat actor is, you know, they are dropping or delivering Venom Rat. And uh, this group is doing this activity or uh, the campaigns that we saw, uh, those are active starting from October 2020 and they are still active. And then we, you know, cluster the, the campaigns based on the TTPs, uh, based on the infection chain. So, and, uh, we will be discussing about each and every infection chain, what kind of variations we see, have seen. So from here I will, uh, yeah. So here we have seen uh, some of the, uh, you know, more details about the RAT. So Venom RAT is basically developed by Venom control software and they are selling it uh, malware as a service. Uh, they are sharing the updates on the Twitter and uh, this, particular rat is having features like, uh, as I mentioned, ransomware module, they have AV evasion, uh, key logging, and all of those things. So when we were doing research on this uh, random rat, uh, we tried to find, is there any similarity of this rat with any other rat? Uh, so we were able to find that this rat, the random rat is having 
same configuration decryption routine similar to Quasar Rat. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, displayed here two snapshots. One is from random config, and another one is from Quasar Rat. So both of these are using the same coding. So uh, we were, I mean, we uh, uh, kind of like found out that this uh, they both use the same code. And then uh, for this particular uh, track actor, they are using specifically two versions of the random rat, 2.7 and 2.8. And both of those versions having uh, the ransomware module. And we will be discussing like why they prefer to use these two in the coming slides. Yeah, so here I will hand over to Avinash, so he will explain the infection chains. Thank you. So uh, we have divided these uh, into different clusters so we will discuss the cluster one first. So in this, uh, in the cluster one, the uh, infection chain basically starts with the malicious CHM, uh, which is actually bundled inside the RAR archive and which is downloaded from the Google Drive. So in malicious CHM, we have seen that it is basically downloading and executing an HTA file uh, using the trusted window utility mshta.exe. So uh, this HTA file is further going to download and execute the VB script. So here we can see that this HTA file is basically starting a PowerShell process uh, which actually download and execute the VB script file and then the VB script file further ex executed using the start process. Now this obfuscated VB script basically downloads uh, another PowerShell script which is uh, uh, done by replacing and unc concatenating different functions and that will again decode the PowerShell script. And that PowerShell, PowerShell script will be our loader PowerShell script. So that uh, loader PowerShell script uh, will download uh, a P file by decoding a huge Base64 uh, blob. And that P file will be our DLL that will uh, that name as a class library 3.dll. So, uh, this DLL will be loaded by executing this run method and uh, uh, the argument to the run method is a reversed URL. So now this DLL will be, uh, it will be a downloader and injector DLL. So this DLL will basically uh, download final payload from the Firebase and uh, uh, by uh, using the string reversing of the URL and then it will, in, uh, once downloaded, uh, it will reverse and uh, Base64 decoded and then it will be injected into reg ASM uh, process by using process hollowing. So that was our first infection chain and the variation we have seen in this, like earlier it was using uh, remote HTA to download the VB script, but here we can see that the malicious CHM is directly downloading the obfuscated VB script using the wget method. So in this, we have seen that uh, CHM is directly downloading the VB script. Uh, moving on to cluster two, uh, we have uh, seen that uh, uh, the infection chain is quite similar to cluster one until this uh, remote HTA is downloading the VB script. But in this cluster two, we have seen that uh, VB script is basically uh, sleeping initially for three seconds, and then uh, it will this VB script will download and execute the PowerShell script from the Firebase. Now this PowerShell script is basically uh, used to download uh, run p loader PowerShell script, and that run payloader will again uh, execute the final payload. So here we can see that uh, uh, this run payloader PowerShell script is downloading uh, these two different modules. One is the final payload that is Venom Rat and then other is the run P module. So this run P module will basically uh, uh, inject the Venom Rat into the rem uh, uh, using the remote process. Uh, then uh, we have seen that uh, this run p module is quite similar to process hollowing only where the run p module is uh, again downloading and executing the uh, uh, final payload uh, while injecting it into the remote process asp underscore uh, aspnet underscore compiler dot exe and another process is caspol.exe using the run p module so in the cluster 2 we have seen another variation where in remote hta basically downloading two different power uh, two different files one is vb script uh, all from the firebase itself so one is the vb script another is the ps file that is uh, run p loader powershell script and uh, that run p loader powershell script will uh, execute the final payload so 
uh, another variation after this, the initial variation, we have seen another variation where this uh, uh, VB script will create a link file in the startup folder, folder for the persistence mechanism. So here we can see that the VB script is basically creating a link file in the startup folder. And uh, that link file name we can see here is like vual frontal dot hotel, uh, dot link. And uh, that run p loader, uh, uh, this uh, link file will execute to, uh, to, you know, for the persistence and uh, uh, it will, VB script will again execute this uh, run p file, uh, run uh, p loader PowerShell script. Then uh, the next variation we have seen here is that uh, uh, this VB script is basically downloaded by malicious CHM directly using the curl method. So here we can see that uh, uh, the CHM file is uh, downloading VB script using the curl method and then VB script uh, basically download and execute this uh, run p loader and that run p loader will inject the venom rat into the uh, remote process. So here we can see that uh, link file is all, uh, also created and in this case ring, uh, the name of the link file is primevideo.link. So uh, after this variation we have seen another variation in the cluster 2 where you know uh, this uh, run p loader file is actually creating a schedule task. So this uh, schedule task is basically created by run p loader file uh, then the name of the task is hill hilled and uh, those uh, this uh, schedule task is created to you know maintain the persistence on the system and this uh, schedule task basically uh, uh, there for, to you know execute the vb script in every 132 minute and as we already uh, uh, discussed that uh, vb script is basically there to uh, execute the run p loader PowerShell script now uh, moving on to the file name analysis, so we have done some, uh, we have seen most frequent file name used by the threat actor 558. Those are the reservation, reservation model, then document names. So using this, we can, uh, you know, uh, see that uh, this threat actor is basically targeting hospitality industry and travel industry. So with this, I will hand out over to Nirmal. Thank you. Yeah, so we saw variations in the infection chain. But uh, when we were doing analysis for the uh, Venom Rat coder, so the code was same, uh, but there were two variants that I mentioned earlier. So regarding specifically regarding the ransomware module, it was not enabled by default. So the I mean, like for enabling it, it requires uh, CNC communication, and uh, apart from that, it also requires the crypto addresses. Like I mean, whether the author would use Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. So that information will be provided by CNC. And uh, one other things, including the key also that I mentioned here, encryption key. So everything is hard coded, like what folders it should scan for encrypting the files. And then um, even even the van extension name for uh, after encryption, encrypting the files. Another thing that we noted is if you, if you are able to see the extension list, it's quite extensive. So, they have even mentioned exe and dll there. So uh, we are not sure. So we think that this is maybe by mistake or this just a copy paste thing. Because like if ransomware will be able to encrypt uh, the sys files from the system 32 folder, then system won't work. Um, regarding encry encryption, so they use the same kind of encryption AES, mostly used by uh, ransomware. And another thing that here I mentioned regarding the encryption key, but if you check here, they are not using that value. They are just using another value for calculating the, uh, the key and IV. And that is important to note because uh, when we tested it, like uh, if you check the decryption so also, so first it will drop the decryptor from the resource section. And then if you see here, it is using the same salt value and not using the password provided by the user. So that means like whatever password we are we provide, it will be able to decrypt the files. And that also like suggests like maybe it is under development. And uh, we saw that like, I mean, even if you don't have the decryptor, you can use any decryptor, you have the key and IV uh, value, you can just provide that and you will be able to decrypt the files. And 
One of the things, they, the ransom node also, they have hard coder, not downloading from anywhere. Only the thing like Bitcoin and uh, crypto addresses that I mentioned, they will get from PNC. So, I mean, when we were checking, like uh, the, during the code analysis, the code comparison, so we were able to find that they used an open source ransomware builder. So we kind of like get cold of that, we decompiled, we compared the code, we were able to decide that this is the same. And we also tried to find, like as I mentioned earlier, so we also compared with other malware families, specifically for ransomware. And we were able to find that another ransomware, Magnus, so that is also using the same rat. And if you see here, uh, Magnus and random rat, they both have the same, uh, encryption code. And similarly for Magnus also, you will be able to decrypt the files. Uh, earlier we mentioned that they use two specific versions of the Venom rat. And uh, like, I mean, when we further checked on other lead sites, so we were able to find these, uh, you know, cracked versions of these two specific variants of the Venom rat. And similarly, we did analysis on that, try to find whether they use the same builders or not, so they use the same one. We were able to find that you, uh, comparing the code and strings and those things. Yeah, from here uh, we will be discussing the second uh, rat that we saw, so Vinash will give this. Yeah, so we have discussed that uh, the leak builder has been used for uh, uh, creating the uh, rat. So here we have seen while you, uh, doing the, some open source intelligence uh, you know, uh, investigation. So we have found another rat which is using the ransomware module. So we haven't found any campaign that has been you know used this uh, particular rat, but uh, we we are sure we this can be seen in the future because uh, this uh, new rat that is called as an RP panel rat. We have found that this has been distributed on the league forum this January, this year January only. So uh, we have also found a GitHub account where the features are mentioned uh, for this anarchy rat panel, anarchy panel rat. So those are some common features like uh, ransomware and MBR infector. Then uh, stealer is there. Then remote shell aviation. These are some features mentioned on the GitHub account. So uh, during our analysis, we have found that uh, it is quite similar with the DC rat, and uh, we have found that uh, the DC rat salt and the uh, configuration routine is quite similar in both the uh, both the rats. And uh, we have seen that uh, this anarchy rat uh, ransomware module code has been copied from the DC rat ransomware module. So. Uh, as we see that uh, uh, this has been distributed on the leaked forum. So uh, using that uh, builder, uh, uh, leaked builders, we have seen that uh, this uh, ransomware node can be, you know, uh, you can customize the ransomware node and uh, uh, specify it from the panel itself. And uh, those CNC panel will control the ransomware and MBR infector module. So here we can see that uh, this is the ransomware module where uh, there is uh, uh, features having MBR encryptor and uh, decryptor encrypt. So uh, in this ransomware module, we have seen two different modules. So in both the modules, few things are quite similar, like uh, encrypting the file on the target machine. So both the module will do that, and then uh, it will decrypt the file remotely from the C2 panel. The only difference is like in the module one, it will drop and execute a decryptor on the target machine, while in module two, it will drop and execute the MBR infector on the target machine. So we will discuss about the MBR infector further uh, in the later slides, but uh, let's start with the encryption process. So uh, if the machine is already encrypted, it will uh, we will it will check, check the registry key that uh, registry value is set as encrypted. And if the system is not encrypted already, it will perform certain uh, actions that is like, uh, uh, it will parse the ransomware note from the packet and generate an encryption password. So we have uh, uh, done some analysis on the algorithm and seen that uh, it will create, generate almost nearly eight quadrillion different passwords combination. And uh, it 
further it will send those encrypted encryption password to C2 you, uh, along with the hardware ID. And uh, once, uh, during the inscription, it will set the registry key as encryption in progress. So during encryption, we have seen that it, uh, the module will basically execute three different functions. Uh, one is system driver, that is basically you know, to encrypt the C drive. And then there is fixed driver and drivers. So this uh, function is basically used to uh, target other logical drives apart from the C drive or system drive you can call, uh, just to ignore the re-encryption of the system drive. Then we have seen that uh, these are the following target extensions. Those are being targeted by the rat. And uh, during the encryption, uh, it's using basically AES, AES encryption. And uh, once the encryption is done, it will set the registry key as encrypted. So we have also seen that uh, it is using this uh, extension, uh, seems like some Arabic language extension. So we have the, uh, we don't know what exactly it is. We also tried uh, with the Google Translator. So after that, uh, once the inscription is done, it will basically download a wallpaper from the mgo.com and uh, set it on the desktop. And uh, after that, it will also uh, you know, remove the restore point from the system. So during uh, encryption, uh, after encryption, it will uh, drops and execute a decryptor also. Uh, and that decryptor is actually embedded as a resource in the ransomware module. So what it does in the decryption, so decryptor basically reads the encrypted file on the target machine uh, by checking the extension of the files. And then it performs uh, decryption, AES decryption routine uh, using the SHA-256 hash of the decryption password. And uh, during the decryption process, it will set the registry key as uh, decryption in progress. And once the decryption is completed, it will set the registry key as decrypted. So uh, as we have earlier talked about the second module, which is uh, MBR Infector. So in this uh, module, what it does is instead of uh, decryptor, it will drop MBR uh, and execute it. So what it does is MBR first overwrite the uh, first uh, 512 bytes of uh, MBR with the ransomware note. And uh, during the end of this process, it will also cause a blue, blue screen of death. And uh, we have also noticed that uh, uh, this MBR infector will only work in the legacy uh, operating system, but not in the latest operating system. So uh, during our investigation, we have also found that this MBR infector is again copied and modified from an uh, open source project that is named as Cryline version 5.0. We have found it on the GitHub. So with that, I will hand it over to Nirmal to conclude our presentation. Yeah, so what we discussed was the top uh, rats uh, in the starting. So, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, what is on the top can change easily because like uh, uh, the malware landscape is depends on uh, multiple things. Like if there is any new uh, threat coming or any new feature coming that any other rat can provide. So malware groups, they will start using it. And uh, we have also seen, and we have shown examples that uh, now malware authors, they use cracked versions, they use the code from different malware families, they stitch it together and then they drive new derivations. So uh, we think like uh, in the future, we would see these kind of malwares, which would have you know multiple capabilities, uh, stealing capabilities and encryption and all of those. And with the other changes in the threat landscape, including, you know, uh, political things or uh, uh, technology changes. We think like, I mean, in the new future, we would see uh, some malwares having more capabilities and combination of other uh, malware types just to increase the revenue. Yeah, I think that's it from our side. Thank you very much. Thank you. So do we have any questions? You sure? Yeah. Yes. Over there.
Uh, did you look at the possibilities to recover actually the overwritten MBR records, like 512 bytes? What other possibilities, like if you don't want to pay ransom, did you consider those? So, you know, as we mentioned, it will only work on the legacy uh, booting system. Uh, so we were we haven't tested it like uh, if it will we will be able to decrypt the MBR or not, but it will only work on the legacy, not on the latest one. Okay, no more questions. One, two, three. It's a large room. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.